Hi, and welcome to the Preform Line Products training DVD for the Coyote Inline Runt Fiber Optic Splice Closure. The Coyote Inline Runt Closure was designed specifically for fiber to the home and distribution network applications. This closure has been utilized around the world and is manufactured in the United States. The closure's compact size easily fits into pedestals and handholds. The Coyote Inline Runt Closure is hermetically sealed and features a reversible hinge cover to simplify assembly. Some of the key advantages of the Coyote Inline Runt Closure include a quick and versatile cable port seal using our exclusive silicone grommet system. The compact size makes the installation easy in today's crowded handhole or flower pot applications. There's no need for any special tools to get a consistent watertight seal. And as you begin to use the Coyote Inline Runt Closure, you're going to quickly see some additional advantages. But before we begin, I want to point out a few key features. This closure boasts a unique end plate design that makes cable entry and installation a snap and re-entry a breeze. A technician simply removes the factory sealed knockouts on the cable entry ports to be used and then seals the cables with our exclusive silicone grommet system. So let's get started. PLP has designed a simple to use multi and single hole silicone grommet system that provides the ability to support high drop capacities and a full range of cable diameters. The versatile silicone grommet system can be used in the Coyote Dome family. The dual chamber. The flame retardant inline runt. The inline runt. The terminal closure. Other approved products include the Coyote MPC and the fiber wall plate and the LCC closure. There are many other accessories in addition to the grommets that can be used with the entire family of Coyote closures. Before we assemble the closure, I'd like to show you the components included in the kit. Cover assembly, base assembly with end plates, end plate cap bolts, hinge pins, hose clamps, grommet kit, and application procedure. Optional accessories include universal mounting brackets, light grip splice tray kit, ribbon managers, transport tubing, the flame retardant inline runt, cover assembly, base assembly with end plates, end plate cap bolts, hinge pins, assembly tool, hose clamps, grommet kit, and application procedure. Optional accessories include light grip splice tray kit, ribbon managers, transport tubing. Now I'd like to run through a list of the tools that we're going to need to complete the installation. Basic hand tools are all you need, so we do suggest that you do not use any power tools during the installation of the product. First, you need a pair of pliers, and that's to remove the breakout tabs from the end plate for the ports that you're going to utilize. A standard can wrench. You need 3 8 or 7 16 inch sockets. You need a pair of snips, and you need a knife. Score the tabs of the entries to be used. Scoring the edges of the tabs with a knife will make them easier to remove. PLP tip. Use side cut type pliers or a knife to start a cut for ease of tab removal. Using your pliers, remove the tab. For cut cable configurations, the sheath opening should be a minimum of 64 inches. For mid sheath, express or balloon configurations, the sheath opening must be 82 inches for dedicated splice points or 102 inches for non-dedicated applications. This applies to ribbon cable applications as well. Align the cable with the hole in the strength member bracket and mark for cable opening. Then mark the cable for your grommet location. Open the cables for your accepted company practice. With the cable opening aligned with the hole in the strength member bracket, make a mark where the strength member will be cut. Install the fibers through the grommet and slide the grommet onto the cable. For express applications, grommets can be slit in the field by following the grommet application procedure. If your application requires express or balloon cables, lay the grommet on a stable flat surface. 
Then use a utility knife to cut through the grommet. To install on the cable, slit the grommet on an angle so the slit does not enter the hole in the grommet at a 90 degree angle. If your application requires the use of a figure eight style cable or cable with a toner wire, the messenger or toner wire must be removed in the area where the grommet will be installed. Remove any material burrs that could affect the grommet seal prior to inserting the cable into the grommet. Apply silicone lubricant to the exterior of the grommet. and insert the grommet into the end plate slot. If you are using a two-hole wide range grommet, orient the grommet so that the grommet arrows are pointing downwards toward the closure. Only this grommet requires this orientation. Install and tighten the strength members under the strength member cap. Repeat the process for the remaining cable entries. If you're not utilizing all the ports in the grommet, insert the provided plugs facing inward. Apply silicone lubricant to the sealing surfaces of the end plate. Install the end plate cap into the slot. And tighten the end plate bolts evenly until the end cap is fully seated in the slot. To verify that the end plate is fully seated, visually inspect the sealing surfaces. Secure the cables to the strength member bracket with the hose clamp provided. Repeat for all the cables. If you're using shielded cable, wrap two layers of vinyl tape around the cables and strength member brackets prior to installing the hose clamp. This is to isolate for grounding purposes. Insert the tie-down clips in one of the eight provided slots. Measure 46 inches from the cable opening and make a mark on your buffer tubes. Apply blue felt to the buffer tubes at that location. Now you can remove the buffer tube and clean the fiber per your company practice. Route the buffer tubes around the base of the closure. Secure them to the hold down clips with the provided cable ties. Install the splice tray hold down strap on each end. Install the splice tray stud on each end. POP tip, install the tie wraps into the splice tray before installing the buffer tubes. Secure the buffer tubes to the trays using the provided tie wraps and you secure them around the blue felt. Route the incoming fibers at least one and a half times around the tray. Route the outgoing fibers at least one and a half times around the tray in the opposite direction. Now you splice per company practice. Secure the tray cover. Install the splice trays onto the studs. Using the splice tray hold down strap, secure the trays in position. Splice tray options for the Coyote inline runt closure include the low profile tray, the standard tray, light grip trays, and the short universal tray. For a dedicated fiber application, 
Cut the fiber on the field side of the ballooned cable. For a non-dedicated fiber application, cut the fiber at the center of the loop. Cut the ribbon to be spliced. To improve handling and storage of ribbon fiber, light grip ribbon managers can be installed over the ribbon bundle. Spread the ribbon manager apart and apply around the ribbon. For additional security, wrap one layer of 3 quarter inch vinyl tape around the ribbon manager. Space ribbon managers evenly around the storage loop. Install the ribbon storage components by pressing them onto the bosses at each end of the closure base and into the slots located on each side of the closure base. Out slack loop to be stored into the storage clips. PLP tip. To simplify fiber storage, start from one end and route the fiber into the storage clips in a clockwise direction until the entire slack loop is stored. Cut a 12 inch piece of clear transport tubing provided. With tie wraps, secure one end of the tubing to a tie down clip. Insert the fiber bundle to be spliced through the tube starting from the clip end. Insert the clip into the side slot in the base of the closure. Repeat these steps for the fiber entering the opposite side of the tray. Thread the Velcro strap through each clip and insert it into the center slots of the closure base. Remove the protective lining from the adhesive on the back of the splice block. Apply the splice block to the base of the splice tray. Install a single hole light grip retention sleeve over the transport tube. Insert the retention sleeve into the entry channel with the angled edge down. Confirm each sleeve is inserted between the guide ribs and is fully captured below the tabs. Repeat these steps for the fiber entering the opposite side of the splice tray. The light grip splice tray supports single fusion, ribbon, pigtails, or a combination. The tray is wider and deeper than PLP's standard splice trays. Tie wrap features are still available on the tray if you prefer that approach. Route fiber to be spliced one and a half times around the splice tray into each corresponding slot. Route the remaining fiber bundle one and a half times around the splice tray in the opposite direction into each corresponding slot. PLP tip. Ribbon managers can also be used to manage the ribbons on the splice tray. Position cover onto tray and rotate forward until the tabs on the cover engage in the base of the tray. For cover removal, compress tabs inward and rotate cover upward. Thread end of Velcro strap through the buckle and tighten to secure the trays. Alternative routing for ribbon fiber. Cut a small piece of transport tube and apply a one-hole retention sleeve. Slide onto ribbon fibers to be spliced. Repeat for all ribbon fiber bundles to be spliced. PLP tip. Prior to installing heat shrink sleeves, label each with its respective splice count. Splice per your standard company practice. Insert first splice into splice block. Install the remaining splices in numerical order. Organize ribbons below the tabs on each side of the splice tray. Slide each transport tube up to the splice tray. Insert each retention sleeve into the entry channel with the angle edge down. Position the cover onto the tray and rotate forward until the tabs engage into the base of the tray. Repeat this process for each additional tray. For cover removal, compress the tabs inward and rotate the cover upward. Route slack ribbon fiber into the storage brackets. Insert the strap clips into the base of the closure. Place the tray onto the organizer and secure with strap. Apply the provided silicone lubricant to all the sealing surfaces on the closure lid. Install the cover and tighten the bolts with a 3 8 inch socket until the cover is fully seated on the closure base. Continue tightening bolts evenly until contact is made between the cover and the base. 
Visually inspect to confirm that the cover is fully seated on the base. Use the air valve to flash test the closure to 5 PSI maximum per your accepted company practice. Flash testing is the procedure that we highly recommend to ensure that you've assembled and sealed the closure properly before you leave the job site. Many companies have their own procedures for flash testing, so follow your company practices, but this is just one alternative way to flash test to achieve the same result. The application requires a source for pressurized air, a pressure gauge, a soap water solution, and in this case it's in a spray bottle, a can wrench, and an F-valve. And that's for the Coyote stainless splice case. Air valves are built into all Coyote fiber optic closures that require flash testing, including the Coyote Dome series of closures and the Coyote Inline Runt series of closures, just to name a few. To flash test, simply inject pressurized air into the closure until the desired amount is achieved. Confirm the amount of pressure with the pressure check gauge. Using a soap and water solution from either a spray bottle or a canister, apply the solution to all the sealed surfaces of the closure. Visually inspect. If there are no bubbles present, the closure has been successfully assembled. If bubbles are present, this indicates the closure has not been sealed properly. Identify the location, take corrective actions, and repeat the flash testing process. For all fiber optic closures, release the pressure and reinstall the valve cap. That's all there is to flash or soap testing your closure. And please remember, the job is not complete until you've flash tested the closure. In summary, follow these steps for a successful application of the Coyote inline run closure. Step 1. Cable measurement and jacket opening. Step 2. Cable preparation. Step 3. Tie down strength member. Step 4. End plate installation. Step 5. Organizer preparation. Step 6. Cover installation. Step 7. Flash testing. That's all there is to installing this product. For further information, go to preform.com to find your local contact. Thank you.